I am pleased to welcome author Wendy Peter, who has discovered a blueprint for success and rediscovering your purpose. Wendy Peter's a story is one of God's supernatural healing. God took her from a family of criminals to washing dishes at a Mennonite camp where she learned to follow Jesus. She discovered that Jesus heals all of our wounds, and she is now the director of Women on the Front Lines, empowering millions of women to find healing and their God-given purpose in a relationship with Christ. Welcome, Wendy, to our show today. Thank you, Bill. It's very nice to be here. Well, your book, which is a great book, was written for those who maybe have had a dream, um, but they feel like they're too old or too young, too invisible, too unqualified or they feel they've missed their opportunity somewhere along the way. And you share in your book that you felt hidden until you were 50. So tell us a little bit about what happened and led you to writing this book. Yeah, well, what was really amazing about my story, of course, I didn't grow up in the church. And when I came into the church, I, you know, I took everything uh, at face value, whatever the Bible said, I believed that we were supposed to do it. And so it came as a surprise to me uh, both when I first came into the church and then became a more serious issue to me over the years as I moved you know, into places of leadership, that so many people in the church feel more like spectators than participants. And you know, the thing that I learned um, through really studying this and with what God did in my own life is that the reason that we need to fix this, we need to actually really uh, give people permission to step into their dreams, no matter what their backstory is, is that God has actually created human beings to run on the fuel of dreams. I mean, that's our fuel. And if you think about the fact that, you know, you could have any um, tool for your home, maybe you have the most expensive, amazing, fancy lawnmower to mow your lawn, but it sits there and it doesn't do anything because it has no fuel. It, it has had a purpose, but it's not able to function. And so really, one of the reasons I wrote this book is that I really wanted to take the story of my own life and how even though my life looked successful, uh, I was under a false ceiling. You know, there was more inside of me than there was on the outside of me. And I think that's something that's very common for people. And so I decided to write Just Getting Started, essentially to give people permission to just get started on a dream, no matter what stage of life you're in, no matter what age you are, or whatever your backstory was that uh, made you feel that you might not be qualified. In fact, one of the bylines I think we put on the advertising for Just Getting Started was simply this, don't underestimate me, I'm just getting started. Wow, that is so good. Because I think if it depended on our qualifications, we wouldn't have most of the stories in the Bible, right? It's really about what God did in people who just said yes, even when they felt disqualified or they're on the outside and others didn't believe in them. I love that, it's the fuel that moves you, I love that. Well, you also talk about false finish lines that many of us have that keep us from the fullness of what God has for us. So what are some of those false finish lines? I think the first one I would point out that I think is the most important one for people to understand is that uh, the first one would be intimidation. We stop because of intimidation and partly we have created a culture since 2008 when the internet and things like Facebook and social media took off. We've created a culture of superstars, you know, where we have these people that seem to have these worldwide influences. And so, you know, your average person looks at that and says, I can't can't compete, therefore I'm intimidated. And so one of the things I like to say, and I wrote about in the book, is that Jesus has not called us to exposure, but to effect effectiveness. And so what a lot of times what people do is they'll come to a point in their life where they'll say, well, I think that's just enough. You know, but there's a part of them that's still really unsatisfied. And so those false finish lines can be things like age. I'm too old for my dream. I'm too young for my dream. I don't have enough experience. I don't have enough money. I don't know anyone. You know, how would I get this out there? I don't have, you know, I don't have what it takes. And I think that that's something that it's important for people to understand that that's just how God likes you. He loves to get someone who doesn't have what it takes and say, hey, I'm the dream giver. I want to partner with you anytime in your life. I'd love to tell you a story about a man named Thomas Moore, 
who was 100 years old when he decided to launch his dream at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. And he was 100 years old, and he set a goal to walk one lap of his garden with his walker every day leading up to his 100th birthday. And he ended up, this actually took off and went viral, and he ended up raising $58 million dollars to help frontline workers during COVID. And this happened in Britain. And the queen was so amazed by this that she came and she knighted him. And he's now, he was uh, Sir Thomas More. And his hundredth year was his last year of life. But you know, if Sir Thomas More can do it at a hundred with his walker, and he could partner with God in a dream that anyone can do that. And I believe God doesn't want us to be those who would end up, you know, no one wants to be in the nursing home sitting in a chair, not doing anything. And so purpose and dreams are that fuel that we need. And I really believe that, you know, um, we need to give ourselves permission, no matter what our age, and we don't need to do something that wouldn't suit us. That's, a, that, that's so far out that, you know, we're never going to be able to even start. Um, you know, and I would have to go, you know, we don't have the time for it today. But what I would say is this, is I like to do an exercise with people where I say, close your eyes and think about this. If money wasn't a problem, if opportunity wasn't a problem, whatever your list of objections are, if those weren't a problem, what is the amazing life you see yourself living? And when I've done this exercise in workshops, 100% of the people see a more amazing life. They see an opportunity. They see something that's a dream. And so I love to do that with people and say, okay, now let's get down to it. Let's take the steps towards that dream, whatever it is. Oh, I, I love that. I love when you said God didn't call us to exposure because you're right. We live in a culture that's all about face image and most of it's a false image, but he's called us to effectiveness. And as you were, when you were talking, I was thinking, like Billy Graham had a mother who invested in him and she yes. was equally responsible for the results that God was able to do through him because of that influence. I really love that. And I also love, you know, don't see obstacles, see opportunities. Well, okay, so if you could have one last thing you wanted our audience to know, really walk away with, what would that be today? I would say this, the most important thing that I would want you to take away is that you need to be able to go to God for the dream because there's really a difference between a good idea and a God idea. And I think I've met people who've become disappointed because they've tried to launch their dream in the model of the way the world would want to launch it. Right. But I've seen again and again that if people will lean into the dream, lean into God and make partnering with him and listening to him uh, the most important thing so that when it's all done, you know, if nothing else, you're closer to God, you've got God with you in it. Uh, that's really what's going to make you find the joy, find the success in pursuing your dream, whatever your age. Don't be afraid to step up, give yourself permission, and take some, maybe take some of those old dreams off the shelf and say, God, is there still a season for me to launch this dream? That's what I'd want to leave you with. I love that. Thank you so much for being with us today. And if you'd like more information about Wendy or to order her book, you can go to 700club.ca. Thanks so much for being with us here today, Wendy. Thank you very much. It was great to talk to you today.